Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to My Turn to Talk. I am Salad Blue Sister, and today is Wednesday, July 21st. Okay, so um, today, what are we going to talk about to today? Um, well, you know, Every every time every time I um, watch the uh, news, <laughs> it totally changes my subject for um, for my show. And um, hold on one second, I want to change something here on my background. I'll blur that out. That's a little better. Okay, so um, you know. <laughs> Every time I, I, I watch the news, I'm 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 changing the topic of my show because something always, you know, comes up or there's a subject that's being talked about, and um, uh, I want to talk about black conservatives, and I want to talk about black conservatives, but I also want to talk about COVID. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I'm going to, to be talking about. Okay, so we have Black people um, in this country who are Republican. Okay, you know, that's fine. Um, you know, back uh, after slavery ended, um, you know, Black people were Republicans, you know. Um, it was Republicans, you know, Lincoln was Republican. Yes, he freed the slaves and it was the Democrats who were forming the Klan and, you know, trying to lynch us and wanting to keep us on the, um, on, on the plantation, you know. Um, Then things changed. And what I'm not understanding, um, I'm not understanding how Black people um, can be a Republican today. I'm not talking about when, you know, 20, 30 years ago, um, you know, when Bush was president you know, or, you know, Reagan, you know, but in today's climate. And I say that because Republicans have always been, um, it's okay if you're Republican, but, I mean, just like the comment that Lindsey Graham said, you know, um, uh, you know, last fall, we welcome black people in South Carolina as long as they're conservative. What, what does that mean? But still within the Republican Party, they don't even want black Republicans to talk about race. Unless, of course, you're Senator Tim Scott and you're replying, you know, they choose you to reply to Biden's, you know, 100 day speech and stand up as a black man and say that racism does not exist in America. Republicans have, um, black Republicans um, have said for a while, people like Candace Owens, um, ben Carson, that they're tired of being used by the Democratic Party. And there's a, a, a woman, and I'm going to play the video, uh, who was recently nominated in, in Virginia, I do believe, um, who is a Black Republican, said that, you know, that she's tired of being used by, by the Democrats. 
Well, if you look at it, black folks are being used by everybody. It's not just a democratic thing. It's not just a Republican thing. You know, it's not just a socialist or, you know, Green Party thing. Black people are being used by every political party, period. But my problem with Black Republicans is that the GOP is so in your face racist. They support racist propaganda, ideas, um, you know, how do you align yourself with that? You know, and what we were talking about yesterday, you know, uh, one of my guests, when she made the comment, which is true, is that Republicans will say, and I have Black people who are Republicans that I know who have said this to me, I'm not voting for the man, I'm voting for the party. I'm voting for what they stand for. Okay, what do Republicans stand for? Because in today's climate, what I'm seeing right now, what they stand for is a lot of racist rhetoric. And don't be fooled. Do not be fooled, you know, my black brother and sister conservatives. Don't be fooled. You may be a conservative, but when you go to vote and you're standing in line, the people who are intimidating other black voters, they're not gonna know you're conservative unless you have on a, a maggot hat. They're gonna come after you just like they are gonna come after them. Don't be fooled. That police officer that's profiling black motors, he's not gonna know that you voted for the former guy or you're gonna vote for another re Republican. They're, they're not gonna know. They're gonna see somebody black driving that they're profiling. When you walk into that store and a security guard or someone in the store says, oh my God, a black person walked in and they start following you around the store. They're not gonna know that you, you know, are a conservative. They're gonna see that you're black. Because first and foremost, before you're a Democrat or you're a Republican or you're a socialist or you're a Green Party, whatever, you're black. That's what they see first when they walk into the room. You are black. What are you gonna take? What are you gonna steal? Who are you gonna rape? Who are you gonna you know, rob? Who, who, who are you gonna beat up? What gang affiliation are you? That's what they see. And how any black conservative even though you're saying I'm not voting for, for the man, I'm voting for the party, can vote for a man who disrespects women so much. And I know that there have been Democrats, you know, who have disrespected women, but how many have actually said and thought it was funny that you're just going to grab him by the pussy? Yes, I said it because that's what he said. How do you support that? How do you support a man who is still trying to execute and calling for the execution of the Central Park Five, even though they have been found 100% not guilty, but still is calling for the execution of these five Black people? How do you support that? Now, Democrats, are they, are they any better? I guess you have to go with that lesser of two evils thing. 
But black conservatives, in my opinion, have consistently said that Democrats use black people. Yeah, Democrats do. Democrats use black folks all, all the time. Did Joe Biden use black folks? Of course he did. Of course he, he, he did. He, he used us to get elected. But isn't that what conservatives want to do too? They want us to come on, come on over here, come on over here, come on over to our side. We'll, we'll treat you, you better. Just vote for us. And that's how I'm going to tie in COVID. Now we have the Delta variant that is in every, except for maybe, I think I saw today on the news, Iowa, is surging in every state across the country. All of a sudden, mass mandates are coming back out. We were what, free of masks for what? It wasn't even a month. <laughs> it's not here in California. It wasn't even a month. We gave up our mask on what, June 15th? Okay, a little over a month. You know, um, now LA County, back in, 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 in Mass, the county that I live in, it's not a mandate yet, but they're saying we want every, we would like for everyone to wear masks. Everybody's in every country, I mean, every state is now in the red zone because of COVID. So switching back to, to Black conservatives, yes, Black people, if anybody on in this country has a right to say, I don't want to take a vaccine or get some type of medical treatment, whatever, it's us. We have the right because we have been used as guinea pigs and operated on, stuck with needles, whatever. You know, uh, without our consent, being lied to what's in, in this stuff, used as guinea pigs for years. And I do mean years, going back to slavery. So if anybody has the right to say, we don't want to take the vaccine, it, it should be us. But the vaccine has been proven to save lives and to prevent people from getting COVID or if they do get it, that they don't have you know, such a bad case of it where you're hooked up on a vent and you could possibly die. And you had all of these Republicans run around saying, oh, no, you don't have to take it. You don't have to take it, even though they, they jumped the line back in, in January. You had your, you know, Cruises and your Hollies and your, your Rubios out there, your DeSantis's, what have you, et cetera, et cetera, who jumped the line and got vaccinated. You had the former guy who did it, you know, in secret in January. Now... Conservatives are on the news. You know, Mitch McConnell yesterday, he's on the news telling everybody, you know, please get the vaccine, please get the vaccine. It'll save your life. They don't care about saving your life. They want your vote because dead people can't, can't vote. They finally realized that all of these surges with the Delta variant is really hitting red states and re really hitting, you know, uh, states where people, you know, um, uh, went heavily for, for the former guy. And they're like, oh shit, our voters are dying. We had to tell them to get vac vaccinated. So to black conservatives, I, I say to you, they don't care about you. They definitely don't care about you. They don't care about the white voters. They don't care about their lives. They care about their vote. They care about their vote. 
And what they realize is that in blue states, voters are vaccinated. Voters, you know, in, in blue states, you know, you have people who vote blue are for the most part still wearing their mask, even though the mask mandates, you know, were lifted, whatever, they're still wearing their mask. So a conservative can say, what has the Democratic Party done for you as a Black person? Well, let me ask you, what has the Republican Party done for you as a Black person? What have they done for you? With the exception of Lincoln freeing the slaves, what has the Republican Party done for you? So let's let's think about that. Okay, I'm gonna play a video. And I'm doing this a little different. Uh, due to copyright issues, the way I have to show this. So hopefully, let me get this going. Tell you what, you, what it means to you, but what you think it symbolizes. Good morning, and thank you for having me on, Will. So I just want to okay, say, I know it's going to be a little hard. I, once a Marine, always a Marine. And also, I'm actually not the first Black woman. I'm the first Black Republican woman. But I'm the first uh, Republican to represent in a district that I did, which was 60% 60, 60 Black since 1865. So thank you for uh, letting me clear that up. Now, I do want to, to say that we are all about uh, school choice. We must have parental school choice. I just heard the segment on uh, critical race theory. It's nonsense. And it says that it's a prima facie evidence. So on its face, as soon as we see a white person, well, they are racist, clearly. And so is everybody else in their family. It's going to be detrimental to our schools. And it's not what we want. It's supposedly to help someone who looks like me. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being used by the Democrats. And so are many people who look like me. You know, Winston, first of all, thank you for correcting me. I am very well aware that once a Marine, always a Marine. I don't know how former Marine came out of my mouth, so I appreciate you <laughs> correcting me on that. You know, but but I don't know, popular culture, mainstream media would lead us to believe that if you are black and a Republican, you are an aberration. You are somehow outside the norm. But everywhere I look, there are people like you, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, who of course is a minority as well. Caitlyn Jenner, a transgender woman, is running as a Republican to replace Gavin Newsom as governor of that state. Why do we assume that if you are a minority, you must be a Democrat? Well, because, you know, it is uh, evidential that there is some fact to that, but we are moving away from that because we're understanding what we call the okie doke is in play. I don't know if uh, you all remember that Ice Cube had asked for a meeting with Biden and he said later, see me later after the election. And he asked for the same meeting with Donald Trump. Donald Trump said, bet, let's meet now. And so you see, we understand what's what. and. We are not going to take it anymore. We are moving away. We're moving back, actually, to our roots. I just uh, reminded our Republican Party that the very first Republican convention after the Civil War was held in Virginia in a black church, in a black church. Imagine that. And so we value everything that everybody else values. And in fact, it's not just black people who are coming back to the Republican Party. It is Asians and Latinos. Right. And I'm an immigrant, so I understand that experience as well. We want freedom. We want liberty. We don't want anyone to tell us what to do either. Really quickly, Winston, I have like 30 seconds left, but you say something interesting. You said you want to make the case to people who are conservative, but don't yet realize they are Republican. Tell me how you make that case. Because, you see, um, we want, again, school choice. We want to ensure that we're not trapped in schools that are, are pulling us down. We want to have the ability to move and put our children anywhere we want. We want safe neighborhoods. We do want our two-way gun rights as, as well. We want everything that everybody else wants, and we don't want to make 
anybody uh, use us as our pawn. When I go to the polls, I don't want people to assume that I'm a Democrat. We want political power. I have none if no one comes to me and asks me for my vote. The same thing everyone wants, respect as an individual. Winsome Sears, we wish you the best of luck in your... Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> um, again, I apologize for the way the video was presented, but due to copyright issues, the way I have to do this um, to get around that, I have to do it like that. All right. So, um, you know, I have a couple of problems with what she, what she says about, you know, um, we want what everyone else wants. You know, I don't want people to automatically assume that, you know, you are a, a Democrat. Um, but it's conservatives who assume that you're a Democrat because you're Black. I mean, unless you, you know, literally let people know I am a conservative, conservatives are the ones who assume that you're a Democrat because you are Black. I mean, I have you know, people that I know who are conservative who assumed that I voted for Obama. In 2008, I was not rooting for Obama. I was Hillary Clinton, 100%. Obama in 2008 got my vote by default. I did not vote for Obama because he was black. And there are people, and you have conservatives who assume that if you're black, you automatically voted for President Obama. That's not true. You know, I mean, she brings up points, but they're weak points. She wants people to see us. The Democratic Party doesn't see us, and Republicans do. I want people to see my, my, my vote. I want people to respect my, my vote. Do you think a Republican is going to respect your vote? Or do they just want your, your vote? And I can say the same thing for Democrats. See, one of the problems to me, and we talked about this yesterday, one of the problems to me in this country is the fact that we have a two-party system. You know, back, you know, when the colonies were being formed, we had the, the, the Federalist Party, you know, and all these things, you know, transitioned into the Republican and the, and the Democratic Party. And I guess that's one reason why um, our politics in this country is just so messed up because we only have two parties. Maybe we should have had that third party that also came out and was, and was strong. That instead of having, you know, choosing between two people, you, you have that third choice. Whereas in the UK, you know, and in France and some of these other places, you know, they have so many different strong political parties. But it's not like that here. So we're stuck. Now I am a liberal with conservative views. I believe if you come into this country and you are not a citizen, then you should do it the right way. That after however much time it takes, you put your hand up before a judge and you take the oath and you and he says, congratulations, you're now a citizen of the United States. That's what I think. I do not believe that American taxpayers should have to pay to house people who come over here illegally when there are so many other things that our tax dollars can be going for. We're coming off a pandemic. We have people who still can't pay, pay their mortgage. People who are still not able to buy food. The homeless in this country, across the entire country is ridiculous. Not because people are lazy 
and because they don't want to work. But a lot of people are homeless because they lost their jobs way back when. You know, and depending upon what state you live in, if you live in a high rent area, you're not going to be able to maintain your home or that apartment. And more and more across the country, rent is getting out of reach for people. So where do they live? They live on the, on the streets. So no, I don't want to see my tax dollars going towards someone who is not a citizen of this country illegally. And I know I'm going to get a lot of smack for that, but that's what I think. Fix what's here first. I don't think that we should be shipping, you know, supplies and food off to other people in, in around the globe. No, I don't. Let another country help them. There are things here that need to be shipped around the country. We have children here, no matter what color they are, that are going to, to, to bed at night hungry. And for conservatives, Black conservatives, you may not agree with all these liberal social programs, but the majority of people who are on these liberal programs, like welfare, Meals on Wheels, they're conservative and they're white. I'm not making that up. That doctor that you go to see who thinks that, you know, your ailment is not that serious or you don't need those pain pills or you don't need to be admitted or just go home and take an Advil and you'll be okay. And you have a serious <laughs> you know, ailment going on. They don't, when you walk through the door on the, on the medical information that you're filling out, they're not asking which, what political part, a party uh, you're from, they see that you're black. So you can say I'm tired of being used by the Democratic Party. Okay. We're all tired of being used by somebody. Somebody's always using black folks. Hell, the GOP is using black folks to, to blame the insurrection on. Blame it on black folks. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, Marco Rubio, who, who is saying, I will use my office. To immigrate anyone out of the, any black, any person who's a member of Black Lives Matter out of this country. They don't want you here. They don't like you. And I say the same thing to conservative Asians and conservative you know, Latinos. They don't like you. They're using you for your vote. I mean, a man who can come down an escalator and say that Mexicans are nothing but a bunch of rapists and killers, they're bad um, hombres, and you still vote for this man? You still support him? And yet people will say, oh, I can't stand Hillary Clinton. Okay. Her emails, her emails. Oh, okay. Was she really that bad? Was she really? I don't understand how you support a person who blatantly in your face does not like you. 
And even when you say, I'm not voting for the person, I'm voting for the party, what they stand for, how can you support a party or in um, platform? Who is openly saying, screw you. We'll take your vote, but we don't give a damn about you. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. But I'm going to play another video. Angry. Even this warm glass of milk at bedtime hasn't helped. It's almost like we're addicted to anger. At least that's what's going on according to Jimmy Kimmel. Wait, wrong Jimmy Kimmel. This guy is a conflict researcher at Yale, but he's as close as I'm going to get to network TV. So let's go with it. We now know from neuroscience studies that people can actually become addicted to a grievance revenge cycle. Okay, so political outrage is literally addictive like cocaine or the Peloton or Pornhub. Yeah, when you experience what you perceive to be mistreatment or unfairness, this triggers uh, the reward circuitry in the brain, which creates a craving in the mind for retaliation. But Dr. Jimmy Kimmel, what is the problem with being angry at someone doing something shitty to you? And maybe you just go on Twitter and troll them endlessly forever. Well, how does that make you feel when you do that? It makes you feel good. For how long though? For, I, I don't know, maybe like a minute. So when you retaliate against somebody, you also experience the pain that you inflict. And you know we're seeing that in our society that is being tempted further and further into you know a civil war type of state. America's favorite late night host just got very dark. According to Jimmy Kimmel, our former president helped supercharge America's rage climate and many of his imitators are still at it. You create grievances for your followers, then retaliate for them, which enrages the other side, who also retaliate, restarting the cycle. It's like a perpetual motion machine powered by petulant bullshit. One of the people who's been running on this grievance hamster wheel for the last four years is resistance warrior Jeffrey Goodman. I developed a lifestyle over these last four years of replying to Trump. I was often the very first to reply whenever he tweeted. Right. Uh, so you're kind of like the first responder of internet trolling. I was one of them. Jeffrey would get his fix with a range of tweets, including this piece de resistance. Wow. Without you, we'd be living in a full blown. Okay, um, I played that because, um, you know, one thing that, and again, I apologize, you know, for, for the quality of, of, of the video, but um, one reason why I, I played that, um, because I know the audio was coming through, was just to, to show you that um, over the last four years, actually five years, we have had people who have a platform and are able to just spew out lies, racism, bigotry, and just have consistent dog whistles. But they're not just against another party. A lot of that had to do against a certain group of people. And even though conservatives go after Black Lives Matter as a group, they're coming after us as a people. They're coming after Black lives. Drop the matter part. For the GOP, they're coming after Black lives. Now, this is my opinion, but I think I'm 
rank. So again, to those black conservatives, What do you think about that? What do you think of all the violence and the hatred that is going on? Do you think that if you were in Charlottesville in 2017, when the Heather Heyer was murdered by being run over by a car, do you think that if, you know, you're in a parking lot where you had two African-American men get beat up by white nationalists, beat up bloody. Do you think that if you were in that same parking lot, that they would automatically know you were a conservative? Or do they first see that you're black? I look at Candace Owens. And some of the things that she has said just against her own people. And even though you have the conservatives, especially on Fox News, going, yeah, 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 yeah. Because one thing conservatives want, one thing that the GOP, one thing that they want, they want us to come after each other. They want us to kill each other. They don't care if we kill each other off, no matter how you, you do it. Be it with a gun, be it with a vaccine, whatever, they don't care as long as we are gone. Either kill us or somehow put us in chains. And Black people have never in this country come out of chains. We haven't. But instead you have Candace Owens and people like her who will get on a platform, on a white platform and stand there as if you're at a slave auction and she's selling you or throwing you up under the bus. That's what they're using Candace Owens to do. And she fell for it, hook, line and sinker. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not sticking up for the Democratic Party. I'm, I'm not, because there are a lot of things wrong with, with, the, with the Democratic Party. You know, and I'll even go back to o o Obama. I think Obama could have done a better job of pushing for um, uh, things for Black folks, and I'm not saying that just because he was black, but I think Obama could have done better. And yes, I know that he had a Republican House and Senate that kept pushing back. And the Democrats now, they need to push a lot harder for HR1, for this, you know, for this John Lewis voting rights act they need to push for it they need to push harder for george floyd but for republicans for black republicans you are being used hook line and sinker you are being used by the republican party and one thing that the Republican Party does not want to hear, and I'll say it again, they don't want you coming to one of their meetings talking about race and racism. They don't want to hear that. We'll welcome Black people in, but can't, can't talk about that. When that Lieutenant Governor from Virginia, from that first video that I showed, made the comment about Ice Cube. Ice Cube called Biden, 
Biden says, see me after, after the election. Okay. He called the former guy. The former guy said, come on. Come on to the White House. Yeah, I'll meet, meet with you. Was it the former guy being open arms? Yes, I'm going to embrace Black people. Or was it like, well, here's another Kanye West. That if I could get him to start dissing Biden, then I'll have Black folks vote for me. Do you really think that the former guy was sincere when he asked Ice Cube to come to the White House? Do you think he was sincere about Kanye West? Kanye West was a joke. He was a joke. He was the lap dog. Kanye West was the, yes, I'm, I'm even gonna say this, but Kanye West was the former guy's dog on a leash. We're gonna use you and see how many black folks we can get. So I ask, do they really care about you? I'm not voting for him. I'm voting for what, what they stand for. They stand for racism and bigotry, white nationalism, and white power. They don't care about you. So I have to pick the lesser of two evils for the time being. Yeah, I'm going to choose Democrat. Am I happy with them? No. But I'm not going to let somebody just totally, you know, crap in my face and laugh in my face after they do it. Shy lady, I see you are here. Yes, I apologize for the lateness. Had another, that, that, that's another okay. uh, meeting. Lives. <laughs> we have lives. <laughs> So, so I, the subject is the Black Republicans. Yep. Again, like we were talking about the other day, a lot of these um, Black Republicans, they want to say the same thing. It's about, it's not, it's not about the man or the woman. It's about the party. No, it's not. It's, 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 it's not about, um, I think I said the reverse. It's not about, it's not about, um, well, maybe they think it is about the party, but like you said, a lot of what the what the uh, current Republicans that are in office uh, now, it is a it is about um, race for a lot of these Republicans. Why are you coming out with uh, uh, voting restriction laws? Why are you going backwards if it's not about race? Why are you um, trying to? Um, well, not trying to, you have. Why have, why have you canceled out uh, Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech if it's not about race? Why? Dr. King, Dr. King was, was known to be nonviolent. How is he associated with a terrorist group like uh, the Ku Klux Klan, who you, who you have said, the, the Republicans or the, the Senate in um, Texas stated that the, the Ku Klux Klan is, is not morally wrong they were not they 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 were not unmoral how how is that how is that not true and then to compare them to saying oh we're going to get rid of i dream we ha i have a dream speech uh we're also going to denounce um everything that caesar caesar chavez stood for and even um uh, susan b anthony her fight for white women to vote so that party, they're the ones who's coming up with these voting restrictive laws. And they're, they're the ones who have, a, have an issue with uh, the critical race theory. So it does appear that a lot of them are, um, the, a lot of them are very against things that are 
for um, progress. And why would you why would you not want to have people vote? Why would you not want to have uh, Dr. King's speech as a um, as a uh, source of education for for uh, people to know about? Why would you not want that? So it it, it definitely makes you makes you um, wonder what is this party really about? You know, well, it seems that? lately everything. Mm -hmm. No, no, go, 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 go on, go on. Well, I was going to say, it seems lately in the last few years, everything associated with this party is bigotry. The Republican Party. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I said, especially in the last few years. I think that the GOP is trying to become a one party rule. I think they're trying to do their best to um, just get rid of the Democratic Party. Uh, because if you get rid of the Democratic Party, if any other party tries to pop up, then you know it'll be very hard for them to, to survive. I think the GOP is trying to become a um, one, one party rule. Um, I think uh, that's one reason why they are embracing white nationalism i think they always have but they're just blatantly uh doing it now and um you know again i look at the candace owens out there and you know even even michael Steele. you know i remember when he was even though he's on msnbc and you know he's he's been like you know against the republican party he still considers himself a a republican you know um but even you know when he was the 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 chairman of the democratic uh uh, I'm sorry, of the Republican Party, you know, as a black man, it was like, you know, some of the stuff that he was saying, like, really? You know, and I just look at some of these ex-Republicans, like your Nicole Wallace's, you know, that's also on MSNBC now, who is, you know, used to work for, for, for George Bush, and she says, you know, just the way the Republican Party has just, you know, transformed, you know, she can't, She's now an, an, an independent, but she still kind of leans re, re Republican. And it's like, um, how do you associate with people who just don't give a crap about other people? And today's Republicans, and this is one of the biggest problems I have with, 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 with Joe Biden, stop trying to kumbaya with these people. This is not the, 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 the Senate. Or, or the Republican Party that you knew 20 years ago. It isn't. You know, and um, I think, again, I just come back to, I think that the Republican Party is trying to be a one party rule. If they are able to do that, say over the next 10 or, or, or 20 years, America's done, done. We are through. I mean, it, it just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. You know, it's, um, it's getting worse every time you cut on a political channel or network that, that have um, politics. It's always this us versus them. And it's, it's, it's such a... Uh, um, a climate of um, divisiveness is just crazy. It's, it's really crazy. It is. And I want to share something with you. I'm going to, uh, hold on, let me share, share my desktop here. Hold on for one second here. Okay. Are you seeing this? Russell Walker, a Republican state house candidate in North Carolina, he said, God is a racist and white supremacist, that Jews all descend from Satan and that Martin Luther King was an agent of Satan. He won the Republican primary with 65% of the vote. America, we have a serious problem that a wall won't fix. 65% of the vote talking this crap. What is wrong with this picture? 
this is what black Republicans support. Seriously? That's that's uh, that's unbelievable. That's crazy. It is. It is. And but, but then again, you look at Marjorie Taylor Greene, the only reason, well, probably that's one of the reasons she won was because she ran unopposed. No one was running against her. But I question if somebody was, would they still have, have chosen her? I mean, this man is saying all this crap and he wins 65% of the vote, not 51%, not 52%, but 65% of the vote, which to me is significant. This is very significant. And it's scary that a lot of people think like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what the former guy un unleashed was hatred and, 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 and bias and racism. And I'm just not understanding how you know, you don't want to be for, 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 for Democrats. Oh, okay. But you're going to tell me that you're actually going to vote for, for the Republican party. And like you said, Martin Luther King was nonviolent. He wanted everyone to kumbaya, you know, he wanted everyone to love each other. And you insanity. It is. It is insanity. You know, and I just can't get over um uh you know, and here's here's another one. I'll I'll share this one. When Mitch McConnell didn't have the 60 votes needed to confirm Trump's judicial nominees, he carved out an exception to the filibuster and made it happen anyway. Please tell me one good reason why Dems shouldn't do the same for voting rights. Why are we not doing this? Why are we not do doing this? Not only for voting rights, but we should be doing this, we should play the Mitch McConnell playbook on everything, on every piece of law, whatever that goes through. We need to play the Mitch McConnell playbook and get through voting rights. Three people on the, adding three more justices to the Supreme Court, DC as a state. Puerto Rico, I'm not so sure. Because they're kind of like the Cubans in Florida. I don't know if we want to include Puerto Rico right now. I'm on, on the fence with them. You know, but D.C. as a state. There are so many things that we need to do the Mitch McConnell playbook on, and we have the opportunity to do it right now. So that's the problem I have with the Democrats. That's my, my problem with them. But for Black Republicans, I don't understand. I I just don't. I just don't get it. I mean, I truly just don't don't get it. I mean, I um, know someone who uh, lives in in South Carolina, black. Um, last year, he sent two of his uh, children off to college. Um, they were both homeschooled. Um, his uh, daughter is, is the oldest. She's 18. The son is 16. And um, he went through an accelerated um, homeschool. So he graduated at the age, age of 16. Sent both of his children to Liberty University. Now, if you're not familiar with Liberty U U University, that's where uh, Jimmy F Falwell or whatever. You know, that's, that's, that's their school, you know, who also has a reputation of treating black people like, like crap, but you know, he's a diehard Republican. He doesn't, he doesn't see anything wrong with the, the former guy. So I said, um, Liberty University is still open with COVID 
like, yeah, they're, they're not closing down. Okay. So are you all getting vaccinated if the vaccine come, comes out? And this is before the vaccine. No. We don't wear a mask. We wouldn't get vaccinated if it did come out. My kids are starting school in September. His kids started school in September. So I asked them. I said, so um, your kids, you know, they're not in a um, co-ed dorm or anything. So they're not um, rooming together or anything. He's like, oh, no, you know, my daughter's going to room in the, you know, girl's dorm. My son's going to be in the boy's dorm, whatever. I'm like, okay. I said, so let's say I'm your daughter's roommate. And I'm concerned about COVID. And everywhere I go, I'm wearing a mask. But when I get back to my dorm room, I'm going to be able to take off my mask and not have to worry about my roommate. Is your daughter going to be wearing a mask? Is she going to be concerned with, with, with the roommate? You know what he said? If God wanted you to get COVID, you would get COVID. If God didn't want you to get COVID, he wouldn't let you get COVID. My daughter and my son are not wearing masks. What is wrong with these people? A black Republican. Now, I have not spoken to him since, um, do you believe it's been de de December? So it's, it's, it's been a while. But our conversations, whatever they went to politics, it was like, I just had to shake my head and say, I just can't talk to you anymore because not on politics, because the stuff that you believe in, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. He had no problem with Trump grabbing people by the pussy. He had no problem with that. But yet he went wow. to, Bill, but he went to Bill Clinton. He went to Bill Clinton and started talking about Monica Lewinsky. And this is a man who is a deacon at his church and will constantly quote Bible verses to me. I'm like, you're going to quote wow. Bible verses to me, but yet you have no problem with somebody grabbing women by, by, by their pussy, but you're going to talk about Bill Clinton having so an with Monica Lewinsky. Lewinsky. Wasn't, um, it was, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't, I don't know a lot about his personal life, but um, the former guy, wasn't he supposedly um, cheating on the second wife? He and, and wound on, up with the third one? He cheated. The former guy has cheated on all three of them. And yes, okay. he, 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 he cheated on Marla Maples with Melania. Mm -hmm. But even before he was with, with his, his wife now, he cheated several mm -hmm. times on Marla Maples. And then with the first wife, he was cheating. But then he ended up, he was cheating again with Marla Maples, he ended up marrying her. I mean, you know, so, I mean, don't talk to me about Bill Clinton or any other person. Don't, you know, don't get upset with me that Hillary Clinton did not leave Bill Clinton. When you have the former guy, the person that you're rooting for, who does not mm -hmm. like immigrants, and two of his wives are immigrants, right? You know, you know. But 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 they're but they're white, so they get a pass, right? Right. They're not considered immigrants in his eyes, right? You know, and mm -hmm. and you know, and, and, and again, you know, what goes on in your family? If if Hillary chose to stay with Bill, that's between the two of them in their household. However, they run their marriage. None of my business. If you want to cheat on your wife and marry the second one, the third one, whatever, not my business. But don't call out someone else when your house is made of glass and you cannot throw, throw stones. You know, yeah. so, um, but these are the people, you know, you know don't. Don't sit here and tell me that, you know, you don't have a problem with this, but then you're going to bring up somebody else. It's like, now, what's the problem with this? Come on. Come on.
And then you got to go back 25 years. You got to go back 25 years to her husband, who was, I mean, Bill Clinton's not running for, for, for president. Hillary was. So again, I just look at Black conservatives and I'm like, yeah, the Democratic Party, yeah, they are fucked up. But the Republican Party? I had somebody ask me about a month ago, what would it take for you to become a, a Republican? And I said, I would never become a, a, a Republican, but you have some, some conservative views. Yes, I do. But I would never become a Republican, ever. Especially now. So when Republicans say they're tired of, when black Republicans say they're tired of being used by Democrats, They have just been so, I mean, just led astray, <laughs> led astray, capoodled, or what, how do you ever say, capoodled, whatever. I mean, it's like, they have just, you know, they have just bought into this crap, hook, line, and sinker. And I just think that it's, um, you know, I, 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 I think that, that it's a shame, you know, and, um, you know, even when Al Franken um, um, uh, I was talking to someone about Al Franken yesterday and we both agreed that Al Franken never, yes, he was doing some stuff and said some uh, sexually harassing stuff. Yes, he, he did, but he never should have resigned from, from the Senate. He never, should, first thing the Democrats wanna do is say, we'll show an example with our own people. We want him to, to resign. He should have said, no, I'm not resigning. Al Franken was a good senator. You know, we needed him. I mean, you're having him resign when you're already seats, you know, in, in the Senate that you need. It's already controlled by the House. You know, the, 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 the Republicans already control the House, you know, and, and, and the Senate. And you want one. Yeah, that, that wasn't a good move. Right. It, 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 was, a, it was a bad move. It was a bad move. See those Republicans out there saying Matt Gates resigned? They're not saying crap. One thing that Republicans do, and they do it very well, they keep their crap, their family crap, inside the House. When they walk out in public, they are a unit. Democrats, they don't do that. And that's one reason why I have a problem with AOC. Now is not the time to diss other Democrats. Now is not the time to say that you don't like something that Biden is or is, is not doing. Now is not the time to do that. Talk about it behind closed, closed doors. I mean, Matt Gates, you know, is a potential pedophile. Not once have I heard any Republican speak bad about him but yet you have in 2015, whatever, you had Democratic women telling Al Franken he needs to, to go. That was a bad move and Al Franken should have not have done it. He should have said, nope, I'm not resigning because he was a, 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 a good senator. What he did, it, it, it was messed up. But how many other Democrats and senators are doing stuff that's messed up that we don't know about? Mm -mm. So I asked Black Republicans, what do you think about Matt Gates and the charges on him? That what he's being, you know, uh, that women are coming out of, you know, his ex-girlfriend, all these people are saying, yes, he was with underage girls. What do you think about that? Oh, it's not the man, it's, it's, it's the party. This is what he stands for. This is what the party stands for, supporting pedophiles. Okay. And you wanna talk about not being used by the Democratic Party. I don't get it. 
I don't get it. Shy lady, I'm going to let you have the last word, and I promise I'm going to let you have the last word. Okay. Again, we as a people, especially Black people, with this current climate going on, um, this Democratic versus Republican, us versus them, voting, voting rights restrictions, we really, really need to exercise our vote our voting capabilities, and we need to get the word out there because um, if we continue to allow um, the Republicans to change important um, acts that, that were created to um, make, Amer make America better, uh, we're going to go back in time and it's not going to be good. So we really need to step up our, our voting, exercise our voting rights and, and talk more about it. Get out there in the community because um, things are not getting better. Things are getting worse. And we have the, the Supreme Court um, endorsing uh, some of these, these, these new bills. It's just not good. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to those, those times. It's not, it's not going to be good. So again, we need to continue to talk and Solid Blue Sister, you need to continue to um, um, have this platform so that we we hope people will hear and and and, and make um, take action. See, now you're making me have to have have the last word because now I'm I'm just you know I just got to get my platform out to more people. So if you can figure yes. out me to do that, you know whatever. Um, but um, yeah, you 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 are right. You you are all right. And for Miss Pan Pandora. As always, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, but that's it. That's my time. Um, I'm Solid Blue Sister. Thank you. Tommy. <laughs> You're welcome. Great show, ladies. Thank you. Yes, always. <laughs> always. And I will see you next Love time. Love yous. <laughs> Love you <Bye>. too. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.